Coming up, a Sad Styles production. Get into it. Hey, Andrew, just before we start recording, um, I, I think we need to have just a little discussion about mm. the podcast as a whole. Take a step back. Take okay. a look at it. I don't know if you felt it. Sometimes it's going it, pretty good. Well, it, it's not going bad. Okay. It's going. It is continuing right. on. Okay. It just feels like sometimes, hmm. you know, our energy gets maybe a little bit flat. Oh. Uh, maybe hmm. maybe it feels not quite lacking, but just a little bit stale. Like wow. we need to spruce it up a bit. Did you not get that sense? You're going to just dump this on me right before we start recording? Andrew, this is what good teammates do together. This is what we do. Oh, okay. And because I'm not taking responsibility for it, I have to it pass it on like to it. my teammate. Yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I have a a proposition for you. Okay. To kind of spruce oh, you got a solution too. Yeah, 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 oh, okay. yeah, yeah. A well, solution then let me know. for you, so that you can keep up with my energy. Okay. Um. Right. So if you just look beside you there, I've got you a, a little a little box. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can just open up that box. Okay. Um. Yeah. So the that's. Hell? That's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mushroom. And, yeah, it's a and mushroom. I, it's yeah, a really big mushroom. It's a really big mushroom. Uh, I didn't cook it. I did find it in the forest. I just know, I know from my I time know, playing forest. video games, yeah. nothing bad can happen from eating mushrooms. In fact, it typically kicks things up a notch. Right. It makes things better. Yeah. I mean, there's one, there's like a, sure, a poison mushroom in Mario every now and again, but that's like right. one in every four or five. So you want me to eat this mushroom because you think it's going to power up my podcast performance? Power up. Andrew, that's a great idea. You know what? This week we can draft a team with the greatest collection of power ups in video game history on the Retrograde Podcast. Theme song. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the Retrograde Video Game Podcast, where this week we talk about the greatest power-ups in video game history. Mm, my name is Andrew Basman. With me, as always, is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. Mikey Aaron. Wop, wop, wop. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Solid start. I love it. That's no. not bad. What? Yeah, no, it's pretty That's good. That's the sound the, the mushroom makes. Yeah, yeah. Wop, wop, wop. Yeah, when, he, when he's growing. Yes. Yeah. Is that whole thing, the Alice in Wonderland thing? I know we kind of brought it up earlier. Is that, uh -huh. a, is that an Alice in Wonderland thing? The, mushrooms? I think it's just getting high on mushrooms thing. I don't right. think Alice- You think it's drugs? I mean, it kind of has to be. The famously loose and hippie Japanese <laughs> in the 70s working on Super Mario and going, you know what? This guy should be pretty rad and just eat mushrooms all the time. I mean, explain to me how it wouldn't be that. Well, no, because the, the that is assuming there is an explanation and not like, I don't know, mushrooms seem to be like a clear thing we could draw with eight pixels. Oh, you think it's one of the like, why does Mario have a mustache thing? Or a hat, yeah. Oh man, I, I hope not. I hope that Miyamoto at his core is just a very fun loving guy. Do you think Miyamoto's ever done mushrooms? Yes. Mm. I think, because he's absurdly wealthy now. And I think you get a little weird now that you have no consequence in your life. So you yeah. like, want to feel alive. So he's yep. like, you know what? I'm going to experiment with a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's that's why murder. It's, what murder? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the hunting humans hunting uh, is a big humans. one. They go to that island that everyone you know everyone talks about. Epstein's. Yeah, Epstein's island. Oh no! Oh god! Oh, no. I, that is a uh, we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> that's a story that just like everyone knows, and we've all collectively went, "Ooh, that's horrible." Uh, and <laughs> let's just pretend let's like it never just happened. Ignore that completely. It's like you know, there's a few more flight logs. Like you know what? I'd rather just <laughs> not know or talk about it. That's great. Thank you very much. Let's pretend life isn't as terrible as it seems to be. <laughs> you know, he was killed by some like rich armada of you know celebrities and stuff like that. And you're like, yeah, probably. It's okay i you know, like it's weird he was killed so fast yep very weird uh be weird if he wasn't uh this is the true. retrograde podcast where we talk about, we talk about jeffrey epstein his <laughs> island etc we uh, talked about this a couple weeks ago though it's like when we found out the unibomber was still alive you're like oh, oh yeah. he's still alive yeah he yeah, 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 peacefully yeah. Of old age that's jail. that's wild that's yes. wild sorry uh, honestly my my uh you, you ever hear the theory that like mm -hmm. post 9 11 we just entered like a different reality uh -huh. or something like that i have heard this like of course it's not true yes of course it's not true but <laughs> go on. There are times when I'm like, something had to have happened. Mm -hmm. I think it's within us. First of all, hope or belief or something uh -huh. like that. But like, I bet you it's just like, I think we're just, we're just so, I don't know, cold to this world now that I think that's what's changed instead of like us skipping timelines or something like that. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's more fun to do that than actually have real consequences. That's it. It's easy to just kind of like, Alice in Wonderland would do step through the looking gas, looking gas, <laughs> looking gas. Don't look directly at the gas. They're developing looking gas, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I hear good. that's you're not allowed. It's it's similar to mustard. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's, it's bad. really bad. It's, it's got bad. a great name. Good marketing. Look, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of gas and mustards <laughs> and all sorts of mushrooms, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about the greatest video game power ups in history. Uh, we thought about all the ways in which we could do this. Top 10 lists, etc. 
rather than that, I I think we kind of came to this because it's a little bit more fun to have sort of combative attitude. Sometimes we we uh, uh, with the lists, it's just kind of like a celebration of all the best yes. things. But the purpose of a power up is to grant you power. It's mm. to give you an advantage of some sort with the understanding that there's going to be a little bit of combat involved. So you and I, Andrew, are going to be facing off. We're going to be drafting our own collection of power ups based on our favorites, the most utilizable you utilizable that's good that's good yeah i like it i need a power up called the dictionary <laughs> uh, hooked on phonics hooked on phonics i uh so I'm, I'm excited to do that before we get into that andrew let's okay. talk a little bit of current gaming news sure uh, big news in the world of gaming for you we've bigged it up for the last two weeks or so uh the release of madden andrew yes. you had some time to play it how's how's that going for you i have played madden i've played a lot of madden and uh i saw john? I, uh, was that john yeah john okay. uh, madden comma john yeah okay. uh yeah 2023 yes uh rest the in peace madden rest in peace john the madden hatter well, that's good. Speaking Keeps of, going back to Alice in Wonderland, and and it's going to come back again and again. The very famous Johnny Depp movie. Those are movies. Wait, that, yep. He played the Mad Hatter. Oh, he did. Yeah, I was thinking Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. There, well, he did that too. <laughs> very similar costumes, uh, general attire, you know, like actually character. You know, it's funny. Those are a series of movies that, like, I you just I'm not convinced they exist. Where they're like, you know, you remember Maleficent? And you're like. No. And they're like, Angelina Jolie played it in three different movies. And you're like, no. Wait, that was three different movies? I think it's two. And then she's in another one as a cameo or something like that. That's, yeah. Maleficent was one that kind of came and went. The, the, that Tim Burton era yeah. of like, let's make Disney come to real life. Like that kind of just, re I know Disney is not uh, uh, the Mad Hatter. I'm, I understand they don't own that. They own a lot of things. Yeah. But they, don't but they did that. make that movie. So they did. Oh, was that a Disney movie? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, then and I'm they made right. the cartoon too. Yeah, you're still right. It's though all those ones like that, those that Tim Burton era of like reimagining older things, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah. and then everyone kind of doing these like fantastical recreations of it. I hated that. That was like my one of my least favorite times for movies or types of movies. He made Dumbo recently. He made Dumbo? Yeah. Where where is that movie? Anyone seen that movie? No? Okay, cool. And I love Michael Keaton, but what the hell? Michael Keaton's in <laughs> does he play Dumbo? Yeah, he plays Dumbo. He plays the titular Dumbo. No makeup, no nothing. Yeah. Just a lot of innocent looks. <laughs> and big ears. <laughs> and big ears. Um, he had to have spacers for like months leading up to this movie. Yeah, no, he's like, he took a very Daniel Day-Lewis approach to yes. playing Dumbo. For what? You know? You the know, I, of a Tim Burton, view. Just, uh, we really need to have a long talk about Tim Burton in like 20 years and go like, so... Was this hey, worth it? I've been saying it. No, I think I, I, I'm a, a big proponent of Tim Burton being wildly overrated. Mm. I think he has some good movies. Well, yes, but I think that he, for the most part, and Johnny Depp's performance is in them as well. It's like, it's so easy to do something that's like, it's so wild. I'm like, yeah, because it's not tethered to reality. You can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that then you could look at someone like Guillermo del Toro and say, well, he's doing the same thing. Yeah. But there's something more like, or me spiritual, or something like that. Me is, like, sure, like sure. You're like, oh, it could be anything. And you're like, well, wait, those are good though. But for like, me, they tell more human stories, and it's more mm, like metaphor and and representations of real things in 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 more absurd ways, as yes. opposed to Tim Burton, where he's just like, wouldn't it be wild if? Bleh? You know what the fun part is though? If you think he's like Willy Wonka, uh -huh. he's not. Like he's a weird, depressed, oh like, yeah, shut in. And yet you like expect him to come out and be like, Whoa, let me tell you about all this crazy <laughs> shit I'm working on. And he's so just, he is like Willy Wonka. Uh, yeah. Like Willy Wonka is just a murderous, <laughs> murderous man. That's just going after children one by one. But uh, that's true. Yeah. He goes, Hey, no one comes into my factory. Do you guys want to come into my factory? And they're like, uh, I don't know. And one by one, they just get picked <laughs> off. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you, but he made like so many good movies early on, like Ed Wood and like, you know, uh, Edward Scissorhands. Ever since your hands, yeah, Beetlejuice. Like, sure. like Beetlejuice is like genuinely like kind of a masterpiece. I think it's really good. But then, and then we're like, great. And they're like, and we now look back, I think a little bit differently on Batman and Batman Returns. Yeah. Because he really created the imagery of what so much of Batman used for a long time. I need period. to go back and rewatch those ones. It's been a while. Or do I not need yeah, to? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, sorry, yes. Speaking of masterpieces. John Madden. John Madden. Shapely, wonderful, <laughs> handsome, not weird at all. 
Didn't eat a turducken. That's what I know. That's why I know what a turducken is. Wasn't definitely afraid of planes and drove a bus all over across the country while he was doing Sunday yeah. Night Football. Weird. Uh, yes, I played Madden in 2023. I, the thing is, I had been ta- this is easily my favorite franchise of all time. I uh-huh. put the most hours into Madden in my whole life. I was a football obsessed child. I'm a football obsessed sad adult. And so I- so, Did lo- you say sad adult? Yes. <laughs> well, I have come to full terms at 37 years old, uh-huh. by the way, that I'm like, I'm a real sicko. This uh-huh. is not good. Yeah. Uh, where like, I am negotiating a calendar with my wife of going like, Ooh, that's Monday, Monday Night Football. Let me check what that game is. And she's like looking at me like, are you serious? I'm like, uh, no, is that the right answer? <laughs> and it's so, too late, we're married. <laughs> you're stuck now. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, uh, that prenup is ironclad. She has a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> so is, uh, yeah, like, I, I love it, but I was on and off the last couple of years because EA is making a very subpar product sure. and they know they are. And they're just trying to just, you know, spend as little money as possible and get as much sales. And, but this year, Oh, so many promise changes. Oh, the franchise has been changed. For oh, the first the time ever. They've never promised changes they've before. never promised never. changes. No. No. And, and if they ever did, they definitely came true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to report that uh, I am the sucker. Uh, uh, nothing huh? has changed. Oh, uh, really? It sucks. It oh, no. sucks. Will I put 90 to 200 hours into this game? Probably. But <laughs> it is not good and no one should buy it. That's so disappointing. Because my next question was going to be. Mm, um, sorry. I stepped on your next question. Well, I could still ask it because I do what's love in my prenup? the sign of oh, yeah, yeah. What's 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 in your prenup? <laughs> um, what is through the looking glass? Um, the is is in spite of the fact that they're not making changes, do you regret your purchase year after year? Like the, my my problem is is that you're essentially paying for a roster update because the changes are so little. Sure. So do you, I, no, do you notice the changes? Because I remember when I used to play the NHL franchise year to year. When when the cha- when when it would first start, I'd be like, "This game feels so different." Mm-hmm. Almost almost always, not necessarily better, but different enough because all of the you know after ninety to two hundred hours, as you said, yeah, of yeah. playing a game, you get so used to the way things are supposed to be that yeah. any minor change feels different. It's how long those differences feel significant because if you play it for three weeks or like a week or something mm-hmm. like that. And all of a sudden it feels like the same game. Then I think they've failed. But if, if you're constantly like, oh, you know what? I'm still relearning these systems. That's different. Is it not like that with Madden? It, it, it really isn't. I, I think, you know, to be perfectly f- honest uh, or fair to, I was going to say fair. Hooked on faunus. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a real, uh, please don't make fun of my disability. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is that I, I think for most sports games, they have found a method that sure. they go like, this kind of works. And other than 2K, and someone will have to correct me about FIFA or something like that because FIFA is not something I'm really strong with. They seem to be some version of the same game, just kind of remolded sure. and repackaged. And, oh, we're going to make a couple tweaks. But they're not doing those overhaul things from like 2000. That, right. Like, oh, no. It, yeah. Where every year it was a monumental like, change. Whoa, you're having to learn new. Like, what is this? Oh, yeah. what's, a, what's a, you know, a hit stick or like, a, sure. you know, whatever. Uh, with all the dangles in NHL too and yep. like the stick handling. You know, I think that's kind of done. And to be perfectly honest, I think it was because of the console changes year after year of like, uh, there was so much to upgrade. Sure. Where now they're like, well, you know, it is kind of the same game. Yep. And I think this is where I'm starting to just realize that like, you can't really expect it anymore. And I'm really giving them a pass for being lazy and cheap. But uh, but like 2K still does stuff that amazes me. I'm just, I I, I hate that Madden is lazy about that. 2K being NBA? NBA 2K, sorry, yeah. yes. Okay, is there something in... Madden year after year that you think needs to change and hasn't like, do you have like, if you were brought on, what yeah. would your first recommendation to the team be? That's a great question. Apart um, from teach me how to code. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I've got a great idea. And they just put me in front of a computer. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> can I tell it to you? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, what, what would need to change? The easiest thing that you can change is if you believe that the in game is broken, mm-hmm. I don't know what to tell you. Like it's football is a very weird and complicated game. And I think it's relatively okay. Yeah. Yes. Players do things all the time. They're like, what were you thinking? Sure. Like they didn't pick up a block or whatever like that. But don't they do that in real life too? They do, but it's harder to justify it when you have a ranking next to your name. That's and true. you're like, you know, so it means 80% of the time, if that's what they told me, it's like an, instead of an overall number, it was like 80% of the time they hit the pass block. You're yeah. Like, okay. So this was the one out of 10 right. or one out of five. So the, I would say that it's the easiest fix is everything off the field. If you wanted okay. to make franchise or something like that, add little press conferences, add new character designs. It is 
pathetic how many character designs there are. Yeah. Like they all kind of look the same. Sizes are way off from people all in relation to yep. each other. You could be 200 pounds and have a gut and you're like, he's a quarterback. What the fuck <laughs> is this? And like, it's just the simplest and laziest decisions like that. They just make it feel like there's no care put into the game. And then the other one is like, oh, we brought back uh, an owner mode, which is like, uh, like you can relocate the team and design a stadium. There's like three stadium designs you can choose. And like, it's like, really pathetic that the number of choice that you're given just things that allow them to put bullet points on a press release without them actually being enjoyable totally and so like that's why when you look at something like nba 2k you have your player who is like very ornately designed like he's so perfectly designed to what you want to look like and then he gets up to the press conference sits behind the bench and you could pick the reporter you want to ask and then the question and it has you know correlation to your life the, like that must seem like the future to Madden. Like if I had to show the team that makes Madden that they'd be like, whoa, how the fuck do you do this? Yeah. Like get out of here. It just, that's where it feels like there's no care put into it. It's so like, I think about this when 2K and, and, and EA were battling yeah. for uh, the best football game on the market and 2K was eating Madden's launch or was at least making yes. great strides in getting Love there. Love 2K. Um, as they were with like, uh, or not not they, but as EA was kind of losing ground to like winning eleven and 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 all that in in uh, in against FIFA. Yeah, and uh, NBA Live, the EA right. Sports was was now all of a sudden losing to two K as right. well. Right, exactly. Their solution was to get an exclusive deal for the licensing in Madden. You say that maybe Madden. Maybe if you expect too many changes within the gameplay, we're just not going to get it. Maybe we've already hit like we've saturated the ability to innovate in gameplay, or maybe the innovators just haven't been there because there hasn't been any competition in yeah. the field. How different would a football game be this year if 2K were also making football games for all the years that Madden had exclusivity? Oh, I completely agree with you. Yeah, yeah like competition creates creativity. You right. Know, like you, That's you why capitalism is so successful. Yes. We don't have an issue with monopolies at all. Right no, now. <laughs> Not no. in a weird way at all. It's creepy. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I would completely agree with you. And like, I also don't think it's anything... I think it's definitely correlated to the idea that EA ever for the last five years, you keep hearing how much they want to sell, right? Like everyone wants to do not is, is Disney going to buy EA is Apple going to buy EA? Right. You keep hearing stuff like that or monopoly. And, <laughs> uh, and this feels like that where you go like, Hey, we might be able to make a billion dollars while spending 50 yeah, yeah, million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. Well, that makes sense for a company that wants to sell. Yes. Of course. You know what I mean? I, instead of going, maybe we should spend 500 million and we can make $4 billion. Cause you can, you, uh, you can almost guarantee that there have been people who have gotten involved. Cause I'm sure it's not the team's fault. I'm no. sure there are people who have gotten involved with creating a Madden game and someone's like, you know what? We're going to shake things up. We're going to do this and goes to the board and they're like, we need an extra budget. We need this. We're going to hire these people. Here's my idea. And that person was almost certainly replaced. Yes. <laughs> like no, they were probably defenestrated, which is one of my new favorite words. What is that? That means when you are thrown, are thrown out, out a window. window. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've heard about that. Defenestration. Yeah. Defenestration. I don't know why we have a word for that. Like how often was this happening? We're like, oh, another one. Wow. Not often enough, I think. Mm -hmm. I we think it should, should happen. Now that we've got a word, we've got to justify it. I don't know if you can self-defenestrate or does someone have to toss you? Well, I, I actually, I started picking up martial arts to learn self-defenestration. <laughs> and they were so confused when I got in there, I bowed and just jumped through a window. <laughs> yeah. And not like please step away and then like kick to the groin, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. Um, yeah. Black Monday, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the great depression. That was a big defenestration. Day. That was a huge, big, <laughs> a huge defenestration. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, does it, okay. So what if the window pane has broken? Do you have to break glass in order for it to be true defenestration? Yes. It's much like a Jewish wedding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where you wanted Mazel to Tom. Yeah, yeah, Mazel Tov. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so yes, I'm a sucker. This game sucks. Yeah. Uh, I'll play a lot of it and I feel bad about myself. So you legit, your recommendation to people who have Madden 2023 is not to buy 24. I would, yes. We all need to, we all need to look me in the eye. We all need to do this. Uh -huh. If you're on our YouTube channel, you can stare me in the eye right yeah. now. We need to lock our arms like we're playing Red Rover and stick, stay strong, okay? You need a good defensive Brother? line. You know what's that? You need a good defensive line. Yes, we do. You're right. That's we why just, I don't know why you use the Red Rover metaphor. Because Madden's done such a bad job teaching me about football. I don't even understand <laughs> that reference. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, I need to teach our listeners about something. Uh, I brought this up last week and I talked about how I had finished Inscription, but I wasn't going to really get into the details of my thoughts on it because I wanted to have a little bit more time to to, to talk about it. So Inscription is, a, uh, is the game that I beat a couple weeks ago. It's uh, available on PlayStation Plus. 
Uh, I got it on my Steam Deck. I played it on my Steam Deck. I think it's available on the Switch as well. I still think that this is, there's a very good chance that this is my game of the year so far, even though it came out in 2022, so it's not technically from this year, but the best game that I've played this year. Ring the bell. Mikey has a game of the year again. (laughs) but, But I beat it though. Okay, well, no. Okay, I take it back. Yeah, I, I beat it, it. Unring the bell. Unring the bell. You unring that. Well, you can't unring I the can bell. You can unring Andrew. the bell. But you can put toothpaste back in the tube. How do you think it gets there in the first place? Holy shit, I've never heard that argument. That's pretty good. <laughs> I assume through the back. Yeah, yeah, and then they probably and then they seal it, it off. Yeah. yeah, pinch it off. This is disgusting. I do not like <laughs> this at all. I don't like where this conversation is going. Can you please go back to your game of the year? I will go back to my potential oh, potential game potential. of the year uh, inscription. Uh, December. Everybody I've recommended this game to has played it and loved it. And you know when you and I are watching The Last of Us mm-hmm. and we are talking to non-gamers, non-capital G gamers, mm-hmm. aka women. <laughs> Wow, I'm joking. what an innocent, just like drive by there. The hell? <laughs> Talking to uh, non-gamers, people who haven't played The Last of uh-huh. Us, and they're so excited about the TV show, and they're so excited about the plot, and we're sitting there talking to them, knowing how much more ends up happening, and you feel like you're keeping this secret. You're like, yeah. oh my God, you have no idea where this is going. Like, it gets so much better. That's how I feel with Inscription. I've been I've been recommending it to people, and they've been talking to me about the opening, you know, few hours or so, and I'm just like, and they're asking me, like, oh, you know, like I'm a little stuck here or, oh, I'm loving this or this is so good. How long is it? Whatever. And I try not to talk to them too much about the details of it because the way that the game opens up is just so surprising and so impressive. So I don't want to spend a ton of time really getting into details about what exactly changes. But I urge everyone out there, you included, Andrew, mm. to play Inscription. Okay. It's on PlayStation Plus. I like like. We were talking uh, before we start we t- turn the microphones on about how games just they keep on coming out. Yeah, <laughs> boy, do they. they just keep on being released <laughs> at a pace that is impossible to keep up with, yeah. especially as an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a game that is what a healthy adult. You know what I mean? Like you could be a oh, real yeah. crazy person and be like, well, I didn't sleep last night. Time to go to work or I'm going to quit my job. You, know? you could beat Tears of the Kingdom in a week. Doesn't mean it's a good idea. <laughs> yes, yes. I could eat everything in my fridge tonight. That's That'd true. probably be a bad idea, right? Unless it's all kale. Right. My fridge is just stocked with kale. That's a lot of kale. It, well, yes. Yeah. You know what? But then it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, we have so much spinach and then you cook it and you're like, we have so little spinach. That's true. Why do we have spinach, so little spinach? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms are good. All one. these things shrink way too much when you put them in a pan. 100%. It's like your link standing in front of a pot with a fire. Oh, yeah, right. You're you, just throwing things You put in. the spinach and the mushrooms in, then do and it's like one single tiny little wow, mushroom. Wow. Um, uh, no, so so PlayStation Plus, Andrew, I urge you to play it. I would love to talk to you all about about uh, Inscription on this I podcast if you have some time. We were talking about, sorry, how, how game companies keep on releasing games and that we don't have time to keep up with all the new releases. I've found the much more uh, uh, healthy way to go about it is to not pay attention to the release schedule and just play the game that my body tells me I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta listen to my how body. Do do, how do you discover these games? I, I, uh, I honestly sometimes I just turn on like my my PlayStation and I scroll through the PlayStation Plus catalog and see what's out there. Or I'll I'll just take to Twitter and see if people are recommending new games. There's a new game on Guard that I saw a lot of people talking about that just came out on Steam. Uh, I was thinking about maybe giving that a shot. Uh, okay, just honestly something that speaks to you. Like these games aren't going anywhere. Uh, they don't speak to you, do they? The games? Yeah. Well, not when I turn, but the discs themselves. Oh boy. That's really? what the holes are for. Yeah. That's <laughs> where the- Put your tongue through it? <laughs> I don't put my tongue through it. It puts its own tongue it through it. It puts its own tongue through it. <laughs> it puts the mo- lotion on the skin or it gets but the hose again. depending on what it says, mm-hmm. I'm going to put my tongue in there too. <laughs> it's a glory hole of a tongue situation. Yeah. yeah. It says, hey, Mikey. And I say, say no more. <laughs> it says, that's Still not discs, what I meant. Eh? That's the weirdest part of that story. Um, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. I did like buy it? I did buy the physical uh, PlayStation Five, the physical disc version. Okay. So I can buy discs. I don't because I'm lazy. It's the greatest feeling being like I don't want to play Spider Man anymore. I want to play Death Stranding, and I can do it all from the comfort of my own couch. It's great. Yeah, yeah instead great. of getting up and having to switch uh, the disc that's yelling at you. D- ugh, it's not yelling. It's whispering. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> play me, play me. So that's it. So that's okay. inscription. That's what I want to say. I wanted to go back and take a look at it, even if you're not a fan of deck building games because this is one um i still recommend giving it a shot it's just it's a it's almost like 
doing a Sudoku or something like that. Like if you if you're looking for that mental gymnastics that you get from like a Wordle or something mm-hmm. along, I guess that's a more timely reference. It, it's everyone is capable of figuring this out. I recommend playing it because it's such a satisfying mechanic, and then the story around it is just incredible as well. Is Wordle timely? Yeah, I guess people still play Wordle. I mean, uh, yeah. What would the? It's the well, most most timely of those things. I you know think. what mine one is? Immaculate Grid. I play it every day. The fuck is that? Okay, relax. Is that uh, the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm so mad so quickly. It's a sports thing because I'm a sports guy. I don't know if you heard about this, and uh, yeah, I'm totally. I understand that. Is so it's uh it's nine nine squares, and so on either side, it's usually like teams or um, an award or something like. And so it might be like Baltimore Orioles. Uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and uh, MVP. <laughs> okay. And on the other side, it would be like Yankees, Toronto Blue Jays, Golden Glove. Oh, and, and, and you, you have to fill put a in player? What are, both, what are both true. Oh, so interesting. Players that have been on both teams or have won that award and on that team or something. I played every day, but you only get nine guesses. You can't get one wrong. That's actually fantastic. It's so much fun. So the whole point of it is not to actually finish the square. You finish the square, cool. Is to find the rarest combination of people. So it's based on each one is like a poll of who is choosing that person. Oh, and so, the most so there are one, multiple answers. You're multiple just trying answers. to find the the most rare one. And they'll show you at the end all the options you could have chose. amazing. But like some of them, it's really nerdy shit. But like some of them's like, oh yeah, you had a cup of coffee here. I know that. And it's like 0.2%. You're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, really for me though, it's just finishing it is, uh, you know. I'm just, I'm married to the game. So like, you know, like, you know, like I just, yeah. is it all one sport or is it all sports? They, it started with baseball because you know, everything starts with baseball. Yeah. And then now there is, it's on the same website. You can choose like football, hockey, basketball. I might try the hockey one. Ho- soccer. I think hockey actually is pretty easy because how many people change teams? All the yes. Time. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's also, like, I feel like the only sport I would know close to well enough to be able to do something like that. Yeah. Basketball. I, I smoke basketball, uh, but another sport the way they change teams all the fucking time. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, baseball is a fun one. So That's yeah. exciting. Immaculategrid.com. Uh, one thing to move on, one person I did recommend uh, inscription to who really liked it was Joe Griffin, friend of the podcast, oh, did the podcast. some art for us that we're going to be uh, uh, oh, showing on the yeah. podcast in a couple of weeks. Um, Joe Griffin also heard us talking last week about like our, overheard us or <laughs> yeah, he's been in the closet while we've been recording. He's oh just in God. there. He's, he's listening all the time. Let him out. Um, Draw more art. You're not getting out. <laughs> Jesus. Mean. Heard our conversation mm-hmm. about I don't know about you, but I don't know if I'm speaking for you, but my favorite politician, Mitch McConnell. (laughs) We had a great conversation about Mitch McConnell. Oh, we did. And uh, and his baffling stroke, I guess. Yeah, I think he had a stroke. I think he had a stroke and shot himself and shot himself. himself. Right. But we are not going to talk about which order it happened in. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) I forgot. And then we talked about how he looks like a turtle. Yeah, he does look like a turtle. And Joe offered to draw us a picture of Mitch McConnell as a Ninja Turtle. As a Ninja Turtle. As long as we looked at it for the first time on the podcast. Oh. And uh, oh, no. and during the recording. So, Andrew, I haven't opened this email yet. Okay. I see. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's the on email that. from Joe Griffin, uh, Mitch McConnell, and the secret of the snooze. Oh, great. So great I'm going to open this up. Okay. We're going to take a quick look. <laughs> so it's and Mitch- we're going to show this over at our YouTube channel, too. So, it's Mitch McConnell. And he looks like he's got Leonardo's <laughs> swords and he's beside Splinter, who is trying to give him advice. Mitch McConnell's at a podium too. And he says, Mitch, the evil shredder attacks. Mitch, uh, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Mitch is having his, uh, he's sweating. He's, uh, he's got that thousand yard stare. Uh, and it says old age mutant Mitch. Instead McConnell. of teenage mutant Ninja Turtles. That is phenomenal. Uh, that's unbelievable. Uh, we'll, we'll post that to our social media as well. And uh, uh, <laughs> this could have been, and I mean, this is in the nicest way possible. Could have been your like cartoon in the newspaper. It seriously like, it should have been, been the reply to like, isn't that weird that Mitch McConnell kind of- uh, In the New Yorker. Yeah, brain reset on live television. <laughs> A very very happy. Oh, birthday that is amazing. Uh, that's, that's always Joe. That's just amazing. Up so, there. so make sure to uh, to follow Joe. You can follow him at Hey I'm Joe Griffin on Twitter, Joe Griffin on Insta, and Hello I'm Joe Griffin on TikTok, where he does some uh, some updates and some of those not time lapse, but like you know the videos where it shows progress. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah progress videos Ooh, pro- progress videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Join me in a day of the life as I draw a picture. <laughs> <laughs> or progressive videos are like they're redrawing the voting map of the oh no <laughs> oh no yeah, which is the worst part is like i immediately get bored but i'm like yeah it's probably really important damn it no nah, i don't care anymore don't well, care about politics it's over it's gonna happen anyway <laughs> whatever's gonna happen i have nothing to do with it, especially because i'm in canada <laughs> i have no say in oh that. that is also true they're like the south i'm like yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, thanks, Joe, for that. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. amazing. Go over to your YouTube channel to see us unveil it there. Uh, but wow, cool. uh, that that gave me a little bit of boost of energy when I looked at that. Yeah. Just like a power up in a video game. Oh, right? there he is. It's time. It's time. Yeah. To do. Oh, I was. So you're doing an impression of Bruce Buffer. I was. He's the he's the uh, the voice of the UFC. He uh, he announces the matches coming up. And I was thinking about the other day because he wears very outlandish suits mm -hmm. because otherwise. What is, is he doing? He? What is he doing? Yes. What does he have a personality? If he's not wearing an outlandish suit, probably not. Right. His brother's more famous than him still somehow. And uh, makes more money than him for sure. Oh, his brother's Michael Buffer. Yes. Who is let's get ready to rumble. Yes. He has that trademarked, you know, the video game ready to rumble. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Bruce, I just, I was just imagining Bruce Buffer picking up his suits from a dry cleaner, right? This is, by the way, this is my audition tape for Mad TV 1999. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Bruce Buffer picking up his suits and they're outlandish. You got to keep this in mind. And so right before the dry cleaner tells him that he's like, hey man, uh, I really fucked up your suits. Uh, like I was eating a big mustardy hot dog and just went everywhere. Before he's able to say anything, Bruce is like, suit looks great. Thanks very much. <laughs> just every time, like how could he tell him? He's like, I drop bleach everywhere. It's like, I don't know. That looks pretty it good to looks me. exactly the same. <laughs> Do you think he wears those suits more than one time though? No. I yeah. also believe they're made of such polyester they probably disintegrate off his body right afterwards. Honestly, probably. Actually, I shouldn't say this. That the, All his suits are made by a Toronto company. Is that true? Our hometown, yes. Really? Which is so weird because he's not Canadian. And the Does he UFC, get them the same place Don Cherry got his? Uh, yeah, like the uh, like the uh, fabric land. Fabric land. <laughs> <laughs> Don Cherry, uh, uh, coach's corner announcer, and the yeah, for that's hockey, a really NHL coach. It's going to be really hard to explain that to anybody at this point. I think even so, current yeah. hockey fans are like Don Cherry, and you're like, which is so weird because you couldn't know hockey without knowing Don. He Cherry He was for like a long our time. Charles Barkley if you watch basketball, or our no. There's got to be a better one than that. A grumpy guy that has crazy opinions that comes in in between oh, the game. I, no, I was thinking just like like someone who's so synonymous with the game. He was almost more of John like a John Madden. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, except yeah. he was like kind of famously for hot takes, where John Madden was like your dad. Yeah, he was just like, hey guys, we're talking football. It's great. Yes. Where Don Cherry's like this Russian fuck. Yes. He's like get him the fuck out of here. <laughs> also, he's a pussy because he wears a visor. It's like a classic Don Cherry thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then we let him be on the air for no thirty forty years. Long time, <laughs> long long time. And then when he when we're like, hey, enough of this. We got to get him off. People are like, I don't know. And you're like, I think we've gotten enough out of him. Sports man. Yeah, weird Sports. weird. Yeah. So there you go. That's my Bruce Buffer thing. Yes, power ups. Power ups. Okay. So so what we're gonna do to bring us back to the to to, to square one. We're going to be drafting, and we're going to go back and forth. No, no snake style, I don't think, right? No, no, no snake style. No snake. We're going to be drafting, drafting a team of six. I, I, I got it. <laughs> what? No, no snake. No snake. No snake. Is it solid? Is it liquid? No snake. Andrew, do you want to explain that to the listener? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had an easier time explaining Don, Don Cherry. Cherry. Exactly. <laughs> um, we uh, 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 we're going to be going through and drafting a collection of six each. Yes. Uh, power ups. And I think the premise is just like what power ups, if you and I were to go into battle with one another, what power ups would we want to have at our disposal? Steroids. Steroids are a great one. But and we I can't think, choose it. I think there were steroids in like one of the NFL oh, or the Blitz games. Yes. Once I think they there's moved also, past the NFL. I think there's one in a brawling game too. And I'm trying to think what it was. But yeah, I, uh, but yes, but we're not choosing that. I'm using that as an example. As an example. That's off the board now. Now, you and I had a long conversation about what a power up was yes because what do we how do we classify a power -up? it could be anything you yes, know some, anything. sometimes you you power up your character by leveling up and and taking on a new attribute or something like that that's not what we're talking about no. here we're talking traditionally about things that are picked up in the process of the game picked up earned gained something like that that provides a temporary boost mm. the boost itself can wear off over time mm -hmm. maybe it's just like a one and done shot or something like that uh or you get hit and then that negates it or you lose. Right. So there were some stipulations that we had that kind of guided what we were considering to be power ups. Yes. I've got a list of rules. Oh, Can I'd I love go through them. It. Yeah. New rules. New rules. <laughs> Get the Russians out of hockey. <laughs> oh, it's Don Cherry's new rules. <laughs> He's probably a guest on that show on Bill Maher. Probably. Yeah. That make that would make so much sense in my brain. Is Bill Maher the new guy that all of our dads is just like, he's got some good points. Oh, he is like dad core. He is dad core. It's like for World sure. War Two. Bill Maher and I don't know, falling asleep watching golf on a Sunday. The easy, yeah, hundred percent classic. The easiest thing that uh, like a news, uh, like a TV personality can do to to align themselves with like a dad, especially a dad with progressive kids, is be like, "Listen, I'm a liberal, but," and then say all the things a non-liberal would say. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, because so like true. my dad's always like, he's like, you know, Bill Maher, he's a liberal, and I'm like, just because he says it doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> 
<laughs> my pronouns are tired of it. <laughs> You're like, all right, Bill, good one. <laughs> like, stuff like that where it's like, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You're like, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so I don't want to talk about Bill Murray. No, I, I know. We did Don Cherry. We did uh, No Snack. We did No Snack. So here are the rules that I've written up. And mm -hmm. let me know if you agree or disagree, because we can amend it on the fly if we have to, okay. if you have any, any issues. But this is kind of what I gathered, what we went back and forth on. And this is taken almost directly from our Slack channel, too. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we got serious about this. <laughs> power up would be something that gives you a boost, advantage, or power change. Mm hmm Yep. So far, that's it's totally fun. Uh, typically picked up or granted. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, is temporary and that it is times or only lasts until a specific moment, i.e. taking damage, reaching a set point in the map, etc. So this was a big one. This was kind of like the turning point of saying if it's temporary in some capacity. Yes. Uh, and not permanent. And because like, okay, so I, I had one that doesn't classify anymore, but this was one. This was a power up I had yeah. written down originally. A rare candy. So that's a great one. Yes. But that, I, that, that Pokemon. Yeah, that applies permanence. Exactly. Yes. So that once that happened, I was like, oh, tick, tick, tick. And I knocked a few off. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, a, that's that's not necessary. Oh, okay. So that that would be a very gray area because the item itself applies the power and then is no longer there. But the power itself is permanent. Stays. So I, I don't think it would apply. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I've used it. It's off the board now. It's off the board. It's off the board. It's off the board. We've dissolved that rare candy. We threw it into a lake somewhere. Yeah. And a Gyarados came out. A fish came with legs and muscles and kicked the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> Who did that? And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> that bass is talking to me. <laughs> I would love to get to the point. We should make like an adult Pokemon mm -hmm. show where oh, we just no no no, no. <laughs> oh okay no no no, no. <laughs> no I don't think that's but great. but <laughs> Jinx exists <laughs> Jinx exists. <laughs> Where we just name them like like fucked up bass is like its name. It's like fucked up bass, and the bass comes out and it's like always in pain, is limping, but has a really strong arm. Racist lemur. <laughs> it's like oh no, racist lemurs here, and just a series of explicit things come out of his mouth. You're like oh boy, oh no. Catch me if you can, pillar. <laughs> And that's just writing checks and forging things all the time. Oh, uh, the Very one, handsome. The one that I always think about from The Simpsons is Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, he's not on the show anymore. And you're like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's 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 how we treated the temporary nature of a power up. Um, can be held and deployed or have an immediate lasting effect. Okay, so explain the second half of that. So it can be held and deployed. So say, for example, I, I uh, say you get like a green shell in Mario Kart. Mm. I can hold it and then deploy okay, it. Okay. That's right. that's a, a power up. I see. Or have an immediate lasting effect. The lasting effect, though, has to be temporary. So if you get a, uh, if you get a, I'm trying to think of something that, that we, we won't we're choose. definitely not going to yeah. choose. Uh, uh, an immediate, but something that basically gives you uh, a power above what you have that will continue on until a set point. Okay. All right. Right? Okay. Uh, now that power can be, it can make you stronger. It can make you faster. It can make you more agile. It can make you, it can give you a, a uh, like uh, insight, like the future into the game or like you, sure, you reveal sure. stuff. Yeah. It, and it could be a, a new method of damage, like an, a new, a new mm. attack. Um, but this is, this is where a, it would differentiate from like a weapon. Okay. If you, uh, if you pick up a weapon, that shouldn't count because the weapon, unless the weapon every time you pick it up is timed or you only ever get like one or two shots. Sure. If you can have the weapon for as long as you want and then choose to discard it and that's the only thing that's going to take it out of your inventory, that's a different story. Okay. Um, it can be defensive or offensive. That's that's a big power up thing. A power up would not be a permanent perk obtained through leveling or item pickup. Okay, so that's where I think rare candy wouldn't apply as well because it's it's through a level through through picking something up, um, and then the perk element is like say you reach another level and fall out, and then it's like well now you can pick locks faster or something like that. That doesn't count either. It's a okay. permanent change to your character. That makes sense. Um, and then a power up would not be a weapon or item which lasts until you choose to drop it. Hmm. Yeah, that's a key one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think I think the list I've got falls within these. I'm sure we will talk about it if it doesn't. Well, if if you're wrong about any of it, Andrew, then I don't you, like that you're the one. Then decider. you lose the pick. <laughs> oh God, forfeit the pick. You forfeit the pick. Oh, wow. But I get first right of refusal. I right. can choose to take it from you. But if I can't use it, why could you use it? Well, because I'm punishing you. Right. And I like being punished. That's a whole <laughs> secret thing that I have. Oh no. Wink. <laughs> Oh no, I took another one. Yeah. <laughs> I took, yeah. 
the shotgun in Doom and you just bend over. You're like, <laughs> like spank me. Oh no, I forfeited another pick. <laughs> Mikey has 10 picks. I have zero. So do you have any, did you have any strategy in creating this list? Any, anything that, uh, that kind of dictated like yeah. we're going to have to choose a like powerful pickups, yeah. like things yeah. that, that we're going to, it's a draft, right? So things are going to get taken off, off the, off the table, but we also have to know to strategize why we're picking certain things. So do you have any strategy going into this? Yeah. I was trying to choose games that, you know, uh, the ones that were like the biggest relief where you go like, Oh, thank God. Yes. And then you're like, you know, flying high, sure. you're doing great. Uh, and then the other ones were, I did just try and choose the most powerful, like head turning kind of, uh, power ups that you could think of. Uh, cause like video games are famous for these, yep. right? Like this is something we always joke about. So I was trying to ones that were like semi iconic as well. I like that. Yeah. The, the iconic nature of it, like say there are 20 games that do something similar. The most iconic one is the winner of that category. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if, 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 if 20 games grant you invulnerability, then the invulnerable invulnerability pickup from the most most popular game or the most popular vulnerability pickup would be the most important one. Yeah, I that think, makes sense. Draft. Yeah. So you went more balls to the wall, as they might say. I think I did. I went a little bit sneakier. Oh, I wanted like to draft a, I want, I want a lot of tools at my disposal. Mm, like Tim Taylor himself. T yeah. I need more power. Yeah. More power, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, um, so I want something that can put me on the offensive. Yeah. I want something that can put me on the like defense. <laughs> Like the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> like the Ku Klux Klan, yeah. Uh, I want something that can put me on the defensive. I want something that uh, can help me come from behind. Mm -hmm. I want something maybe that I can use in a pinch. Okay. I want something mm. that's kind of like a position player with a little bit of, so you see what I mean? Like a, like, like. So it's like, a varied, you know. Yeah, very, like something that can serve a different purpose so that if I find myself at odds at any point, mm -hmm. I have something at my disposal. Okay. Uh, and that allowed me to kind of vary up my choices as well. Now, I think you probably dealt with this as well. It is hard. To f it's harder than you think to find power ups that aren't that the where the iconic one isn't Mario. It, Mario uh, Mario's roster runs really deep. It's no coincidence that Mario uh, like really wrote the history of video games in a lot yeah. large part. Yep. There's so many things that aped Donkey Kong. Oh uh, wow! Onto onto Super Mario and like use that as a formula and then did something different with it. But man, we could have made this a Super Mario power up draft. Honestly, you you could do just that if you wanted to. So I purposely tried to avoid getting more uh more than one or two from any game. I was I would agree with you. And Super mm -hmm. Mario, I'm going to limit myself to one. Okay, that's just an, that's my own rule. You can do whatever you want. Sure. It's gonna be funny when you take six, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to just take one from just the actual side scrolling game. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, speaking of. You want to do it? Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Uh, do you want to lead us off with this, Andrew? Oh, I would love to. I'd love to. Okay. So with the first pick, man, this is tough because there are, this is the point where they're like, okay, there's like four in my mind that are like very obvious and good picks. Yeah. And really at this point, I'm trying to draft stuff that Mikey is going to want too. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to get out in that's, front of you. That's the difficulty and read your the mind. first few picks, but you also don't want to sewer any of your later picks. No, exactly. And hopefully, you know, that's pretty much, you know, that's the real strategy for these drafts is like, choose some obvious stuff and then choose your own stuff so that later in the second half of the draft, sure. you can choose your own stuff. I think in my mind, okay, with the number one pick, I think this is going to be the obvious one for me. I think this is, in my mind, the best power up you can get because uh -huh. it is one of the original uh, field tilting power ups. It's all of a sudden you go from prey Ooh, uh -oh. and you're getting hunted. This was going to be my first pick. To be the hunter. Yeah. I'm going to choose the power pellet yep. from Pac-Man. Legitimately, I think there can be no other number one. Uh, yeah. there, there, And you know what? In the spirit of, of showing, uh, paying homage to the, to actually, no, you know what? I was going to pick as my number two, a different one. But, okay. But no, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to, I'm going to change things up a little bit. Okay. But, but I like that pick, Andrew. Thank I like you. it because it's so iconic. I think a lot of people would look at Mario, as we talked about, for being the originator of so many of yeah. the uh, of, of the power-ups that we know and love. But I do th I think the power palette has to be the first instance of like, you're not locked in here with me. I'm lo I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with 100%. me. 100%. Kind of like balls to the wall, turn turn the tables. See, yeah. but like, even if like, and I'm not going to name any other picks or anything like that, but like, even in most of these, it's like, now I become, I'm trying to eliminate other opponents, but now I become a more powerful version of that. 
in Pac-Man, it's the complete opposite. Like, I can't think of something else where you actually change the rules of the game or sure. going like, I'm trying to run away from you. And now all of a sudden, like, you're running away from me. That's true. Like, that's a very different thing than all of a sudden, like, Mario's trying to eliminate, you know, uh, Koopas and all these kind of things. It's yeah. not like all of a sudden now the Koopas are trying to kill him. That's that's true. You know, and, and I, I, I think it's a good point as well, because the power up is so entrenched in the gameplay itself. Yeah. The game is about the power up to yes. a large degree. Yes. You can't like, sure, you can you know, get scores without ever using it, but you really do have to incorporate power pellets. Like I've actually gotten into Pac-Man again recently. You, this is every couple of years for you. Eh? I, yeah, I uh. really like it. It's I, I have one of those mini arcade one up consoles that I play right. and getting the power. The, the game is about how do you corral the ghosts into an area where you can get a power pellet and try to eat all four of them. The power up is the game in a yeah. lot of ways. So so for for that, I think it's it's an earned number one. Um, and, and you know what? I, I'm not going to overthink this one. It has to be first or second pick uh, in, in a power-up draft is the most... More people know it, I think, than the power pellet, sure. even though it does, I think, owe a lot to the power pellet. It's the superstar from uh, from from Mario. Absolutely. T take your pick which Mario game it's from. It's yeah, from yeah. all of them. But it's it's essentially the same thing. The star, the song, you're that's, invincible. So that's one thing that I like that it adds to it. You know, if we're duking it out, the power pellet, I'm scared. I'm scared. A, because I'm a ghost. <laughs> In this, in this scenario. So something horrible has happened to me in my <laughs> past life. <laughs> and I, 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 I want to eat you. <laughs> I have unresolved business. Why am I on, still on this mortal plane? <laughs> I don't I don't like that at all. No. I can't eat the pellets even though I'm driving right by them. Yeah. You have delicious fruit all near you. Actually, in your home is delicious fruit. And I can't. No. Wait. Wait. What? Where is his home? Is the home just the screen? Who? Pac-Man? Or that's the ghost? A, that's a separate question. Who lives there? What is that? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Question? What is this? You're the expert. Oh, and Pac-Man? Yeah. Oh, um, it's very much, uh, I think it's kind of like, you know, when I'm going to compare this to being a human, mm. you know, you just kind of <laughs> says normal human thing, <laughs> you know, you just enter the world one day and you have tasks that you have to do. You got to get a job. You have to make money. You got to feed yourself. Yeah. No one asks where we are. We no. just know that we are. That's a real, that's really good. And that's the same thing with Pac-Man. Yeah. He wakes up every day, just knows he's got to eat. You just got to eat and you got to <laughs> run away and then you got to fight. You got to fight. You got to fight, flight, and, and, and fuck because Miss Pac-Man's around too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you chose the invincibility star. Yes. In, in oh, actually Miss Pac-Man, oh. they have the power pellet. Yeah. And then they have the pill. And that's when he chases oh after my her. God. He turns the tables, baby. Um, uh, yeah, I, I got the I got the star. I nice. mean, it's just iconic yeah. because it's it's scary to go up against the power pellet. I need a defense on of my own, something that is equally as invulnerable. Yeah. One thing I'm going to say that that gives me a bit of an advantage here is the star lasts a little bit longer than the power pellet. Sure. So in some kind of unholy world where these two are comparator. Well, comparatives. that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. I, I agree with you, but there it's, it's comparing apples and oranges. If you, well, that's another one of Pac-Man's favorite foods. I know. So advantage Pac-Man. Advantage Pac-Man. Oh, <laughs> fuck, you're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. But the music that comes, we can the both, we can so both good. enjoy a little bit of a jam. Oh my God. That music is so good. But in, if you lived in Mario's world, that music would be terrifying. 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 What if you're in a bank one day? Yes. And you're just like, I, I'd like to withdraw some funds. And you hear, everybody down. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. And then like, the sky's flashing and yeah, stuff and like that. Like, and you're like, God damn it, hide. Everyone He's coming running. by. He's fast now. I won't touch anyone. <laughs> yeah. I just want the money. What happens if he touches the money? It's like a Midas curse thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, just, <laughs> it immediately explodes. It's yeah. too powerful. I, that has to be the second choice. That, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're knocking out some obvious ones. Yeah, I, tried, now I, I almost overthought it, and I'm, I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad you didn't either. I would have taken it. I uh, I think now at this point is where the draft kind of starts a little bit. I think so, yeah. Because now we're kind of opening it up. Okay, with my second pick, we're doing six rounds, by the way. Did we're doing six that? rounds, okay. yeah. So my second pick, I am going to take, oh, man. This is one of the ones where it's like, is it good or is it fun? And I tried to choose one that was both. Fun is good, too. Funny is good. Yeah. <laughs> What a weird thing I have to remind everybody. Fun is good. <laughs> My second pick, I'm going to be choosing big muscled up men holding big guns. I'm going to choose the spread gun from Ooh, Contra. Is, oh, the spread gun's your favorite gun from Contra, eh? I spread think so. Guns, spread gun's great. It is fun. But there's something about facing the other way and firing those homing missiles <laughs> that I really like, baby. That is that is good. You're right. But I just think this is the one where you're like, 
it's it's kind of like what I was saying. Uh, it's it's a relief. You're yeah. like, oh, thank Christ. And you just That's walk true. forward and you're like, all right. Something, I mean, there is something to be said. You know, you, you mentioned, is it is it good or is it fun? And it's kind of both. It's it's It saves you and allows you to feel more powerful and allows you to have more fun. Yes. You know, it's it's there are certain things in games where you get it and you want to hold on to it, not just because it's an asset, but because mm-hmm. the game is is more enjoyable when, when you're holding on to it. Yes. And that's good. That, like we said, is something that goes away when you get hit. So exactly. So it is temporary in yeah. some capacity, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, spray gun from Contra, I just, a ton of fun. And, you know, really also very early video game stuff for me where you're like, holy shit, I'm so powerful. Yeah. I, I like that one. It lets you shoot it at, at better angles as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got, so I, I've got my offensive do? pick. I've got my offensive <laughs> okay. pick okay. and I, and I think I'm going to, I'm, I could argue that's defensive too, though, by the way. Like the star? Yeah. Yeah, the star's kind of all around. Yeah, that's okay. true. That's true. But the another pick that I was considering, I don't want to do just because it's so similar, I mm-hmm. think, to to offensive. I want to I want to make sure that I get I want to make sure I get some stuff that's 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 gonna help me in some other situations. I'm just worried that my more practical picks I can save till later, but I who know. knows? I don't I know. know how deep you went on this. This is what I always struggle with. But I'm gonna go. I'm on the fence here. Okay, you know what? Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe you do at some point take a lead because of your because of your power ups. Okay, maybe maybe you do uh, 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 pull out a little bit, and and you've got you've got no, the not me. No, you're, no, no, I'm not is, a pull out guy. This is well because you got the pill. You're playing with one hundred percent. Yeah, condoms for sailors. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe with your power ups, you 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 come out to an early lead. I need something that's going to allow me to come from behind. This is important to me. <laughs> yeah. I need something that's going to allow me to to rush forward against all odds and 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 take the lead where I rightfully belong. Okay. That's why I am drafting with my second pick, Bullet Bill from Mario Kart. Oh yeah, okay. That's get fuck. I didn't even think about that one. Cuz I'm thinking Bullet Bill takes you from seventh place to first and nothing can hit you in the way there's a bit of an invulnerability you get a huge speed boost yeah and it's always going to put you on track to, to it's going to give you the advantage you need even when you're playing a little bit worse so okay that's so funny you say this so a little bit of an enlightenment to mikey is that i when i was thinking about choosing uh mario kart related things i was i had blue shell written down because i knew Mikey's never going to take the blue shell because uh-huh. he hates the blue shell. I hate the blue shell. You hate it as a concept. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I also hate, I also do hate bullet bill, but at least you can avoid bullet bill. That's true. When you're in front of it. Yes. Uh, uh, the thing I hate about the blue shell is unless you are a particularly savage player at yeah. Mario Kart, uh, it's almost impossible to avoid. Well, much like another famous blue character, he is inevitable. So, you know, also I've gendered the shell. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that is my second pick is bullet bill from Mario Kart. That's awesome. That's a, that's a good one. I didn't even have that one written down. And now I'm like, oh, that's, that's a very good choice. Um, okay. My, th- my third pick, man, this is tough. Okay, six. I'm starting to do the math in my head a little bit here. Okay, my third pick. I'm going to choose something a little different that's probably not going to be on your board, but I think it's very interesting because of the amount of options you get inside of this. Sure. Tell me this is a little too broad, okay? Okay. If not, I can choose. But I'm going to choose kill streak rewards from Call of Duty. Okay. So when you, you've you chosen the, the abilities you get for playing well, you get a temporary... Uh, granting a power to to yep. an airstrike or a UAV or a helicopter comes in or something like that. I love it because it's a reward for playing well. Yes. Instead of finding something or getting lucky or knowing a secret or whatever like that, this is a genuine advantage because you're playing well. I love it. And we did say it can be picked up, but can, it can also be granted. And yes. I think granted is earned. Yes. And I think you, you earn, what? what? No, it's granted by Hugh. Oh, by Hugh. You famous lover of blowjobs. <laughs> Famous lover prostitutes. We should put a hall of fame of prostitute lovers <laughs> together. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. I, it's a f- bunch of I athletes. I could go on. A bunch of athletes we could choose. My dad. Mm-hmm. Your dad. Mm-hmm. My mom. Your mom. That's how they met. <laughs> <laughs> no, I so love that. Yeah. Is it, do you have any particular uh, Call of Duty so, this is a boring. This is a boring one, but the UAV. I think it's, right. yeah. it's something as simple as you can get a three kill streak and then all of a sudden you can find out where everyone is on a map. Yes. That's awesome. Yes, you could always be like, oh, I had a 12 person kill streak and now all of a sudden a helicopter shooting people for me while, you know, I'm just sitting back and it's like a passive income thing. It's uh-huh. awesome. But like, I think it's more, I think the, the advantage is better when it's a little bit smaller. And sure. I, I think that's like more earned to be honest. I like that. And I have a, 
as my third pick. Oh, okay. Direct competition to that. Wow. Okay. Exciting. My, my third pick. Speaking of threes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're you're not going to need your UAV to find me once I've got this pickup. Oh man, this this power up. Okay. Because all you have to do is look in the horizon for smoke. Because I'm going to be smoking, Andrew. You know why? Because he's on fire. <laughs> I get three buckets oh, and I'm on fire. Not only that, not only do I look cooler, oh. my shots are better. You got to work a lot harder to stop me. Don't get too close to me, Andrew. You're not going to want to touch this. No. I'm burning up. No, no, no. I'm burning up. It's like a goddamn fever. Holy shit. You can see on YouTube, both picks now in a row. I have not had that on my list. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck, that's good. Yeah. He's the, on fire. That's a great choice. for And NBA you know what? Jam. I was worried when I, when I picked it, that you wouldn't allow it uh, just because it's, it's not a, it's not a pickup. It is a power up but it's it's also kind of intangible you know yeah, but yeah. it's an earned and so i'm glad you you picked the the kill streak because that's kind of the same premise right? yeah it's the same yeah. as the the what else did i choose the spread gun yes it's temporary in the way that you get a bucket scored on you you lose yeah, that power exactly so yeah. there you go oh yeah. that's a great that's I, a very good choice i worried that that you'd be like well you, there isn't like an item that you pick up to get mm. it or something but th that's not always the case no the that's and that's yeah. okay but, yeah, and yeah. it's the same thing that we were talking about with the kill streak it's it's yes. earned by skill it's yeah. earned by playing well yeah man that's a really good choice um okay so for my fourth pick fourth round of this draft it's going quickly um okay how many more do i think i can get here okay i'm gonna choose another one temporary you can only use it in short bursts and uh but when you do boy do you feel powerful you could just you feel almost like a god will i say mm. i'm gonna choose spartan rage from god of war Ooh, oh that's okay yeah you talk about fun and good oh little anime the little little animations you get and yes. stuff. oh man you it is the time that you feel like a god you're like oh i can do no wrong right now so spartan rage when you were playing god of war yeah did you did you use that because you can swap up the 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 upgrades the types yeah. yeah did you did you use spartan rage the whole time i tr i used it mostly i used it for most of the game and then i switched near the end because i found one to be more effective against the current uh, enemies yeah but i'm spartan rage for most of the game i i upgraded the one that was like it gave you an immediate i think it was like a health boost or something like that i can't remember what it yeah. was called but that's what i swapped out for i did it. too because I, I i loved it man i had that was the first game that i played where i figured out a build like you yeah. know some people look up how to like min max and they like get a get a build like in diablo or something it's like this is what you put your stats into mm -hmm. and you you're doing a poison rogue or something right. like that i i put I, I just saw that there was consistency in using like the outfit that had poison build up which would weaken people mm -hmm. and then uh, and i could i could uh, apply poison on people and then if i hit poisoned enemies i got health back and then i also had that rage so i was basically just unkillable every time right. i hit someone i'd gain health and then i looked it up on youtube and apparently that was like a build that people were doing all oh, the time yeah okay like a really good one oh, i figured wow. it out on my own yeah hey i didn't need help yeah you're a real pioneer <laughs> I, yeah thanks andrew yeah <laughs> it's about time someone recognizes it um uh no i like that a lot spartan rage is fantastic another good and fun one because you feel so fucking powerful in it totally and that's going back to like the original god of wars as well there was always the spartan meter you'd fill it up and just let loose mm -hmm. and that those those kind of like win button scenarios are always good yeah a little bit oh. of tension and you just kind of let loose absolutely and because you are allowing yourself to not use it i to be perfectly honest it's a lot like pac-man in a very weird way yeah because you have that option at any time that yep. you could go to it and you're like, I could go get that pellet or I could get two more corners here and then yeah, come yeah, back yeah, around yeah, and yeah. try it. Yep. You're really just playing a little bit like a little cat and mouse game. I like that. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of cat and mice, mice are pretty hard to find and you can be as rageful as you want, but if mm. you can't see me, how are you ever going to whoop my little ass? You're choosing John Cena? <laughs> I'm waving a hand <laughs> in front of my face, baby. Uh, yeah, good luck finding me when I've got my active camo from Halo. Oh. I, I love the idea when you're playing multiplayer Halo or even single player Halo and you pick up the active camo and you can be right behind someone and they don't know. Now there's one thing I've always appreciated about this power up as well is you could kind of see there was like a weird distortion like if you were really looking yes. for it. Yes. Um, so it's not completely unfair. But man, the first time you're like hanging around right next to or beside the enemy and you know, uh, hopefully there's no screen peeking involved in the yes, multiplayer, yes. but that feeling of like, I, I got you right in my sights and all it's gonna take is just like a shotgun blast to the head and you're dead, but but I'm all in control there. I love that. Oh, you can use it to get away. Yeah. You can use it to, to uh, sneak up on someone. Very versatile. That is my defensive pick is active camo. That makes sense. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a really good selection. That's one ag again I didn't have on my list. That's a good one um yeah okay and it makes sense that you're giving them little assignments yeah right? yeah 
Okay, so that's four rounds in. We got that's two four. more left. Yes. Now, we, now it's the hard part of the opposite. Now I'm like, well, which two do I really, really want? Um, okay, you took the invincibility star. I had a feeling I was not going to get that. Yeah. So I needed my own competition to that. Sure. That I could use some level of invincibility that's fun, that you feel safe. Uh, it's like a warm blanket at the end of the night. And of course, I'm going to choose Aku Aku from Crash Bandicoot. Oh, that's great. Yes. Uh, it's also fun because the little noise is very catchy. It's kind of like... The, yeah, exactly. Or you mean the the Congos. Like, dum, 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 yeah, like and all of a sudden you want to just move really fast yes. and like run around and stuff like that. I think it's just, it's uh, it's fun. Is it culturally, you know, sensitive? Probably not. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's where Crash Bandicoot decided, I guess. Um, but it's, you know, it's the equivalent of the star. And it, it was one, it was the one that I thought of that when we were talking about Mario, that like everything kind of just came from Mario. Yeah, for sure. And Crash Bandicoot has a large part of, even though the game is different, uh, there's a large part of like the formula that you're like, oh, I can see this in Mario. I, I It's funny, I, when I was thinking about your first picks and my first picks, mm -hmm. if you went uh, the the star in the, for your yeah. first pick, I considered just as a counter pick, picking Aku Aku. Okay. Um, but then also there's the, the power pellet, but just to show like here, it's one-to-one. -one. There like, is a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, 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 totally, yeah. totally. Yeah, like that is a little bit of a wash, but you know, I, you know, even though this was a fifth round pick for me and your first round pick. It's a great fifth round pick. It's a great, it's, there's a lot of value in the fifth round, but it's, it's, you have, you have first round pedigree with the star. It like is kind of like you ordered the star on wish.com. Yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. Yeah, like this yeah. is the, why would you get the star? We have the star yes. at home and then yeah. you look at the star at home and it's Aku Aku. You're like, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, no, that's, it's, it's, it's helpful. It's, you're going on the offensive and I like it. Yeah. You know, I'm hoping I can be crafty, but in terms of sheer power, Andrew, you're cornering the market. Mm. So that's why I need to be careful here. Okay. I'm worried that you've you've cornered the power market so much that you may land a devastating blow at some okay. point. Okay. And in that case, say I've used my bullet bill, say say you're already in the lead and say you've, you've dealt me that death blow, I'm going to need a little help. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm going to need a fairy in a bottle from Zelda. Oh, from Zelda, yeah. It's nice. got to bring me right back to life. Yeah. No more, like, you talk about the warm blanket feeling of an Aku Aku. That's having a, a fairy in a bottle in your inventory in Zelda. You just feel, it's like your mother's hug. Your mother's hug. When your mom hugs me, yeah. I feel like I've got <laughs> a fairy in a bottle in my inventory. Am I making sense to you? Totally. Oh, no, no. That makes Oh, no, no, no. You, you why, following you me? You don't need to explain anymore, my man. <laughs> Absolutely. We got you. It just, it's just this, this sense of relief and like a safety net, like anything can happen. You can take that fatal blow. You can make a mistake and then you're always going to come back with, uh, with a little something, something. <laughs> <laughs> I think fairy in a bottle is a great choice. Obviously I do not have enough experience with Zelda to, uh, to choose it with, with honesty in my heart. Okay. I think I would be lying to everybody. Okay. And I think the deep heads at home, the listeners and viewers, I guess, uh, would know that I'm an honest man. Oh, you think that you think that that's what they think about you like now? Of course. Oh, okay. I'm okay. just like just oh, oh, like oh, curious sorry. like what what are some of the reasons why like what have you done that make cuz I know I know it. I see it. I see you all the time. Right. I know it. But what do you think like some of the things that you've done that make people think you're honest? I'm super authentic. Um I wear my heart on my sleeve. Yeah, and that's gross. Uh, I, I admit my, you yeah, should put I, that back in. I know the, in I have a chest. collection of them though, so it's I got to display them somewhere. Oh, by yours, you mean you've taken it? Fire yeah, yeah, keeper style. I'm much like a cow. I have four hearts. Uh, okay, okay. They're four stomachs. Uh, uh, how does that work, by the way? Four stomachs. What is that? Oh, yeah, who's triaging? <laughs> also, like, what do they all do? Compete for the same food? <laughs> that's that's it. Like, if I eat a hamburger and there's just the one lazy stomach, that's like I'll take that. Well, also, if you eat a hamburger and you're a cow, I don't know if you, I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> this is like Miyazaki, this is like no, Miyamoto, like hunting his own kind. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, you have to imagine there's a moment with a cow that eats like a hamburger by accident and goes, "God damn, they're good." <laughs> Fuck, I understand. Shit. I get I it. Totally understand. They this. would demolish a hamburger. Are you oh my kidding God, me? Yes. They would love it. Yeah, I think we're the only ones that have morals. I think we invented that to make ourselves feel bad. Which is what a weird thing to do. Yeah. Why would we want ourselves to feel bad? Yeah. Are we like arguing for the existence of God? I think right now. <laughs> oh boy. Ah, let's no, change I the think subject. We're arguing for the killing of more animals. <laughs> oh, then I'm all for this. Yeah, okay, back on to it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. This is it. My sixth pick. We're in the sixth round, everybody. Um, ah, it's tough. Because I don't have something for Mario. And yeah. I said I was going to take something for Mario. Sure. There's a thousand choices left on the board. So, and because it's my sixth pick, I don't really have to choose the most powerful power up. I'm gonna choose my favorite power up. Okay, great. And my favorite power up for Mario, the one that I would go out of my way to get, and then if I lost it, I would immediately go back to try and get yeah. it again. 
is the Tanuki suit. Amazing. Yeah. I just, not only does he look adorable. He's very cute. He's so cute. He's very cute. <laughs> he's a little raccoon. Uh, you can fly. Yeah. That's fun. And like, I don't know, the twirl, the, the whole hitting with the tail thing. It's just kind of the best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Best of all worlds of the power-ups. Um, short of the invincibility. Don't worry. I'm not, yep. not coming. No. Not, I'm not coming for the king. Um, but is that you get everything else. And I just think it's it's a real, real game changer. Yeah, the Tanuki suit is amazing. It's funny, everyone loves the Tanuki suit. Mm -hmm. I've always been more partial to the cape. Oh, the cape, yeah. Uh, just because that was my first experience sure. with flying in a Mario game. Uh, I understand that the Tanuki suit is essentially just a replacement for it and a, a better replacement at that. Um, but I, I did have the cape on my list oh. and I was considering it, taking it for my last one. Um, uh, but I've already got bullet bill and I've already got the star. Uh, you've got the Tanuki suit, so I don't need to, to match that pick instead as my last pick. I wanted something that allows me to be a little bit agile to get from one place to another very quickly and to show a little bit of a love to a franchise that has yet to, uh, to, to, to show its face on this list. Sonic come on board. I'm getting the running shoes. Wow, that's great. I had a Sonic choice on here. I had the Thunder Shield. Oh, the shield was great. So as my one of my defensive picks, I considered taking the Thunder yeah, Shield. Yeah, that was well. a great yeah. one. Oh, but the running shoes, that's fantastic. I just need a little bit of agility. Uh, yeah. Uh uh and and I I I I considered for agility the cape feather or the tanuki suit as well, but I I you know gotta show some love to Sonic. Sometimes oh, we forget about our wow. little blue brother. Oh <laughs> yes, we always forget about our little, the little blue, blue brother. Oh my goodness, the blue shell, Thanos, all these other famous blues. Yes. Um the, the bro Papa, brothers. Papa Smurf. What's that? Well, the, I mean Dan Aykroyd, Smurfette. Oh, the Blues Brothers. The Blue right. Brother yes. himself. The Blue Brother. <laughs> the Brothers Blue. Oh, that is such a confusing movie that I love for some reason. It's so good. Uh, they fight Nazis. Um, <laughs> they're on a mission from God. It's all very odd. Uh, Mikey, do you want to do a recap of our draft and then we'll uh, do some honorable mentions? Yes, that sounds good. I've got, uh, so as my number one pick, I had the Superstar from Mario. As my second pick, I had Bullet Bill from Mario Kart. As my third pick, I had On Fire from NBA Jam. Uh, <laughs> as my fourth pick, I had Active Camo from Halo. Fifth pick, Fairy in a Bottle. The steal of the draft, if I gotta be honest. Yeah, here. yeah. And my sixth pick, I had the Running Shoes from Sonic. Okay, there we go. My first pick was Power Pellet from Pac-Man. Number two, Spread Gun from Contra. Number three, Kill Streak Rewards from Call of Duty. Number four, Spartan Rage from God of War. Number five, Aku Aku from Crash Bandicoot. And number six, Tanuki suit from oh, Super Mario. Oh, Tanuki. A lot of good picks left on the board. Mikey, name one for me. Uh, the Sledgehammer from Donkey Kong. Oh, that's you know, a great one, one. one. Like, like the influence for the superstar in, in Mario. You know, before Jumpman got stars, Jumpman got sledges. <laughs> sledges? Uh-huh. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't forget about the sledges, Don't Jumpman. Don't forget about the sledges. Uh, also, just the, the mushroom from Mario. The regular mushroom. I consider yeah. it as a defensive one. It's kind of like a shield from Sonic where yep. it gives you a hit and lets you stay alive yeah uh and it's also just so iconic yeah i was gonna say like my boring one was the red shell for mario kart yep but i just think it's like the one where like no one's ever mad to see it you're like it's oh, good. good yeah it's, honestly it's it's one of the best things you can get in mario kart 100%. especially because you'll get it in second and third places yeah as well maybe not first but uh, uh what a, what a good way to to take a position on someone when you're in second place it's all you can ask for totally i already mentioned the thunder shield from sonic hedgehog 3 i had like Master Ball, Ultra Ball from Pokemon written down and I was kind of like, ah, eh, that might be a fight. I'm not going to do that one. Mm, it's temporary. It's temporary, but it doesn't give... That's it's, tough because you as the player are not really a character. Like, it doesn't... It doesn't upgrade your it's tough i can see that being a gray area i feel though. like there's more inventory yeah so like it's, like an it, item that's like a strict yeah, item. yeah so that was a little tough the other one that i wanted to choose and i'm kind of surprised it didn't show up there was anyone's ultimate from overwatch i i i had as an honorable mention die 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 from reaper just because it's so much fun yes yeah i was i'd earth shatter i think i had a few of them written down i was like okay which one's the best one earth shatter's great uh uh yeah i don't that, that was uh, I, I totally forgot about the overwatch one but i but i had that it's funny you know reaper i, I play reaper as dps sometimes when I'm playing the game and it's I don't think he has a very effective ultimate but on the rare occasion that you, you Drop pull in. it off it Ugh. just feels so good it's so the good. one where you just don't see it coming at all because you, you know but yeah so that that would that would have been my other one as yeah. well yeah, yeah, that's great. Love well, it. There we go. Those are our power-up drafts. So two pretty good stack teams. Obviously, there's a lot more out there that we missed, so please let us know what we missed. Uh, at Retrograde Mikey, at Retrograde Andy, and at Retrograde Pod. But until then, we love every single one of you, and we cannot wait to talk to you soon. You power us up. Oh. My name's Andrew Baskin. with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. Mikey Aaronworth. This is the Retrograde Podcast. Game over. Is that the opposite going down? Yeah. Yeah. No, going down is what this sounds like. I'm Hugh Grant and I won't do that. <laughs>
furnished by Sad Styles Productions. Please don't sue us, you Grant.